Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem 2 News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. Police in Idaho and Washington are now searching for a man on a multi state crime spree. Police in two western Washington counties and in Post Falls are looking for 30 year old Jesse Spitzer. Take a look at your screen. He is considered armed and dangerous. He's evaded capture several times now and was last seen fleeing from police in Post Falls just this morning. Kyle Simchuk is outside of the Post Falls police station tonight with what we know so far. Well, police are still looking for Spitzer, who's considered armed and dangerous. Post Falls police say when they confronted him early this morning, he pulled out a gun and threatened to shoot himself unless officers left. Here's another look at Jesse Spitzer, a 30 year old from Sultan, Washington. As you can see, he has neck and face tattoos, but authorities believe he's using makeup to hide them and may have shaved his head. Early this morning, Post Falls police were investigating a car burglary where firearms were stolen. Then a caller reported a suspicious man approaching a neighbor's home about a mile away. Police say they chased Spitzer through yards and over fences near the Woodbridge subdivision. Officers and a tactical team surrounded a shed they believe Spitzer was hiding in. The commotion woke up neighbors who were told to shelter in place. SWAT vehicles set up and a couple hours after that, windows started rattling with the flashbangs and I was at the neighbor's house. There's numerous little souvenirs around there from the flashbangs and um, I guess we got the all clear around eight o'clock or so. Spitzer managed to escape this morning. He wasn't in that shed. He's also wanted in Snohomish and Chelan counties for burglary, assault and possession of a stolen vehicle. He managed to evade a SWAT team in Western Washington on Friday and Saturday was tracked by a canine team into some woods near Goldbar, Washington, but still managed to escape. Spitzer was sentenced in 2011 for shooting a Nevada sheriff's deputy. If you have any information about where he is, contact the Post Falls Police Department. Reporting in North Idaho, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Well, it has certainly been feeling a little more like we live over on the coast because it's been so foggy, so gloomy and so gray and it's really not letting up. Yeah, it's just kind of settled yeah. over us, right? Those cold temperatures not making anything any better. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining us now from the Outdoor Weather Center. Thomas, is there a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak? <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit over this <laughs> okay. weekend. I, you know, listen, I'm trying to look for the sunshine, too. There are reasons to be optimistic on uh, some days versus the others. In California, sometimes they call this the June gloom, but obviously uh, it's not California and it's not the summertime either. So we're just kind of stuck in these doldrum and gloomy days overall. Still cloudy skies, a uh, bit of a chill in the air with it being below freezing as we have been pretty much all week long. Let me see if I can get this lookout past camera to uh, pop up for you, which it just did. Look at how foggy it is over the top of the mountain pass. And of course, it's very cold outside in these higher elevations. So I would not be surprised if some of these roadways are getting a little bit icy simply because it's as foggy as it is up there and the fog is going to be rather patchy but obviously quite intense as it has been the last couple days so we'll continue to see this develop and track that into the morning hours but I did mention temperature wise below freezing right now obviously going to be well below freezing for tonight as well so we're tracking the fog for a couple more days but I will show you the days that do have that optimism when it comes to the sunshine if you are looking for a little bit of it. All right, thanks very much. Well, tonight we are also learning more about just what happened in the moments before police shot and killed a man who was threatening a baby in Spokane. When Spokane police arrived on scene near Chief Gary Park, they made contact with a woman, but say they had difficulty getting information due to a language barrier. Police then entered the home and they saw the man holding a, ma a baby with a knife to the baby. That's according to court documents. Officers tried to de-escalate the situation, but the man then went upstairs with the child. Responders said they believe the man might attempt to light a can of kerosene on fire and cause an explosion. Two officers spoke with the man from the bottom of the stairs. The officers shot the man then inside the house. He later died. A Spokane Independent Response Investigation is now ongoing. The victim impact statements from the Freeman High School shooting were on pause today in court. After two days of emotional testimony, the court was not in session today, but over the last two days we have heard from students, parents, teachers and loved ones who were all affected by the killer's actions more than four years ago. We are expecting to hear from up to 150 survivors before the shooter is ultimately sentenced. This testimony resumes tomorrow morning. 
And deputies in Snoqualmie are looking for five young men who escaped from a juvenile detention center earlier today. The five escaped from a medium and maximum security unit at Echo Glen Children's Center. Their ages range from 14 to 17 years old. The five escaped after assaulting an employee and they got away by stealing keys of a blue Ford Fusion van owned by the state. One of the five escapees is a murder suspect. Others are being held at the facility on charges like firearms possession and possession of stolen property. We'll have more about their escape coming up in our next half hour. Construction crews are chipping away at the basalt to make room for that new downtown sports stadium. Today, the Public Facilities District signed papers to buy a property next door for $5.25 million. The owner of that property leases it to the Value Village, so that thrift store will ultimately be demolished later this year, along with the SYSA building. That's all to make room for event parking. One of the top stories that we are tracking this week, two separate women reported two separate attacks near Manitou Park last Thursday. Now, Spokane police detectives are tracking down the man behind the assault. With no arrests made yet, though, the community on the South Hill is still being extra cautious. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley shares now how local runners are reacting to the news. Spokane runners are on high alert. My awareness is a little heightened. Last week, two women reported a man attacked them in the morning near Manitou Park. Spokane police say in these two separate incidents, the suspect ran up behind the women, grabbed them in a sensitive area, and ran away. Spokane Special Victims detectives have identified a person of interest, but at this time have not made an arrest. This now reminds me again to um, maybe not keep my earbuds in, when I run or being mindful of what time of day it is. Jill Johnson is part of a Facebook group for Spokane Runners. She says news of the attacks at Manitou has spread quickly. I'm grateful for our police department for taking such quick action and the news stations for reporting it so that we know we're spreading the word so that we're um, more careful. Right now, she is training for a 10K race and eventually a half marathon. You'll likely find her working out on the South Hill, but for now, she is steering clear of Manitou Park. I try not to live in fear, but it also is a reminder that I need to um, be aware that this is happening. I'm going to stay away from Manitou Park for a while, um, look for opportunities to run or walk with a friend. And if I do go alone to make sure I text my husband and let him know where I'm going to be. Investigators say they are not releasing a description of the suspect right now. That's because detectives are working to verify pertinent information. Meantime, detectives will continue tracking any leads. If you have any information regarding these incidents or similar acts, you are asked to call Crime Check. Amanda Rowley, Crem 2 News. Well, Spokane County once again breaking records when it comes to coronavirus numbers. More on that, plus an update on the COVID outbreak at the Airway Heights Correction Center. Also, have you gotten your mail recently? Some people in North Spokane say no. There have actually been quite a few delays in their mail delivery. So we're asking the post office why when we come back.